Guten Tag and good day. My name is Troublemaker and this is the War Game Cup. And it appears that today will be uh, German Day because this is the second match in a row I've casted featuring German players. And this is a NATO versus NATO match. The first player is Vosfiri. And our second NATO player in the red will in fact be Spawn the Farkel. That's a weird name. Um, yeah what to say about this map ideally in a perfect world and there's a little bit of psychology in this each player would take this quick higher point reinforcement point and then they try and fight for middle each player would take a middle location at this point they're fighting for two places this wood location here and this wood location here because these locations will enter a very good vantage point to snipe with tanks and tank destroyers into these locations. This means that you will need infantry to take this location and tanks and tank destroyers to destroy everything here. This leads to interesting collections of units, but that's in a perfect world. And in this metagame, actually people are favoring maintaining their main base, going for Charlie or going for Gulf and going for their main base. There's also been an alternative strategy where people go for Delta and create a flank on this reinforcement point. So there's been a nice variety of strategies that have come forth from the tournament and uh, you know people have been copying and stealing and whatnot. We have two commands out for Voss Fury and for Spawn Farticle we can see one, two commands as well, and a lot of helicopters. Looks like we're going to see a helicopter infantry build coming from Spawn Farkle. He has two, four, six, eight helicopters, and he has a ton of infantry. And this has become very, very popular. Um, a lot of players from beating, not well beating, but almost beating top players by doing this, and it just looks really impressive. Uh, from Vosphere, we're seeing something a little more standard. Uh, some infantry to fight for the jungle, some tanks, some mortars and some tank carriers and uh, I mean this is just you know a pretty standardized play whether he has enough anti-aircraft units to face off these helicopters something else uh, there's two ways of using the helicopters the first is cheesy and that is using the sniper commands and the second is actually to support your your infantry and usually split your helicopters into two groups one going with this group of infantry, one going with this group of infantry, and you actually use the uh, helicopters to try and pick off uh, infantry carrier and anti-infantry vehicles. And so from Vosphere, you're going to see the standard play that I was describing, and he has two flak panzer and six infantry going to guard this command here at Gulf. That's important to note because this looks like it's going to be an infantry helicopter all in from uh, spawn particles. You have to see whether he's prepared. And at the middle, he's going to rush ahead, try to take this force of location so that his enemy cannot deploy tanks and anti-tank weapons at him. And in fact, he does spot a single group of infantry. There's four of them here, and he's moving his his anti-tank weapons and his tanks forward. Also, his command armor is going to take position here. Keep in mind there is a flank across the river as well. And here we go, eight infantry versus four. This is not going to look good. Shasers from Moss have been deployed in this jungle location. And on the other flank, we see eight <coughs> more help more infantry coming along and they can actually come across the black the back flank here we see all on the top the gazelles and the infantry are preparing for another attack and it looks like most of the shots from Hamas of of spawn article have actually been cleaned up there's only two VABs worth and there's just so much shots from Hamas and artillery fire which is a big big key in the side of this battle um, that appears that uh, Voss be really fine for now but here comes the back flank of infantry Keep in mind, none of these have really had support, and they can, if they can snipe these rice pads, you can just jump right back in this game. He's got to unload right now, on top of them. Here we go. Unload, unload, unload. There we go. Shasta's month unloaded. He's got to unload all of them. He's going to need all, every single one of these to take care of this patent. He gets one patent down. Immediately, Spawn Farkle is taking a huge lead because of this, and he gets all of them. 312 points. And here comes the giant clusters of helicopters. There is, in fact, some shrapnel nails actually unloading on them and giving lots of kills off for free. <coughs> and there you go, he's down the four helicopters. Here comes another flank of infantry. He has secured Bravo and Echo for himself. He's going to be at points disadvantage, and this play has to be successful. He has a group of eight infantry here, 
And these Shasters must have done the damage they need to do. They're really the only success of um, was sniping at those Rise Patents. Rise Patents, of course, very, very effective and potent tanks. Now, does Boss Fury know, but the infantry does not know. But he does have some Shasters from us in position to intercept them. There, of course, are some Shasters from us and Flak Panzers here. So it looks like he'll mostly be fine. He should be able to deal with this effectively. But it all comes in movements. Now, there is Shasters from us here rooted. They're not being attacked. And they can actually come and get the mortar carrier. So still some risk here from the Shasters from Moss. And here we go. He's moving in. There are two Shrapnels actually moving in position. They could actually take out these helicopters. The infantry are going to bypass this group of Shasters from Moss completely and going straight for the kill. The helicopters need to be on, on, on hold. When you're doing this kind of push, you don't rush in with the helicopters. You rush in with the infantry. And the inf with the infantry, don't see any, any anti-air. You bring in the helicopters. It's a way of risk managing effectively. And he's actually going to try and hit these Shrapnels before they can get into position. He's actually stunned them and he might be able to wipe out these Shrapnels completely. All the while he has 16 infantry being dumped on the commander. And without that Shasta from Moss intercepting, this could be actually insanely damaged. He, he has to pull out the commander, <coughs> the commander and he is. He does it all of the all of these Fusiliers squads have actually been deployed. And the commander is forced to retreat and this could actually be another fairly big win here for Spawn Farkle. The Spartans are actually going to chase it down the command armor, all the while the Fusilia is going to deal with these Shasters from these VABs, loaded Shasters from that need to be unloaded immediately. And uh, he's continuing to move forward. Most of these are stunned, but they're still in motion. The Flock Hunts are, are clipping them from the side, which is exactly where they're weakest. The Fusiliers have taken this position, and the Spartans continue pushing forward. We see an artillery barrage trying to desperately do something. A couple of these Spartans have been rooted. We see that the. Flak Panzer is really the only unit he has at this? Okay, so these Spartans can actually get in range to do something. They can do something. And uh, Shasters from us are actually coming along the side to try and intercept here as well. So this could be scary. He's on the move fast command, which is necessary in order to really run away from these vehicles. And he can actually just run into a Shasters from us here. It's kind of scary. Looks like he's going to go and settle into the woods here. Cutting across Shasters from us. Oh, this is so scary. This is so scary. The Shasta Moss are finally going to come across, and they're going to do damage, and rockets are firing. The commander is worried. He's got to remove it, and looks like it will back survive. The Spartans pushing the mortar carriers back. The tank destroyers are actually out of ammunition. The tanks are winding up. Need to get rid of the Shasta Moss very quickly, and got to clean up a lot of these locations. There's currently only one command in position for us. Uh, for, for Voss Fury, and he needs to get this to a reinforcement point. He needs to get more units out, because if these all-ins continue, he's going to be in trouble. And the Fusiliers are actually taking position here at the Gulf location, and he's not going to be able to deal with it. The Shasters from us can still do damage, can still wipe with this Chieftain MK5. And the, these Coop Shasters from us are actually going to catch out the Mortar Carriers, and he actually kills three of them. That's a huge steal. The fourth one could also go from a lucky rocket fire, and here we go. Could it go? Ooh, rocket killed it. He gets all four carriers. Spawn Farkle now, a 400-point lead. The Chieftains are still unloading on these Spartans, and looks like they will in fact retreat. The Shasta Smas is moving up, and they're just in time for the Chieftain to escape. Chieftain gets one rocket shot off at it, and actually the Chieftains might be able to clean up this group of Shasta Smas, but we're seeing another rocket go out, and one MK goes down. Completely worthwhile trade. A back flank of Fusilier squads are actually coming in for Spawn Farkle, so he's not done all inning just yet. No, he's not done at all. He's actually using his command number and Juliet to try and get a massive points lead, and all the while, there's a trade-off here. There is a trade-off. He can get a massive points lead, but he has to be able to reinforce at some point. So that means that he has to take one of these critical locations back. Now, he still has control of his FOB, which is good. He, there are no real forces here. But as long as Spawn Farkle is successful in blocking the reinforcement, he can be in a good position. It looks like the Fusiliers are getting hit by all flanks. The Chieftain Optic Failure will retreat, and the Fusiliers are not going to be able to really do much damage. And that's unfortunate for him. But this does allow for this hero group of Shasters Moss to, in fact, move up to the oil refinery. Or maybe that's petroleum. I believe that's a petroleum storing facility. And make this area even more insecure, realistically. Oh, I see what we got here. Boss Fury is actually going to move his command armor to this far, far north hotel location. Very exposed, very easy to be attacked, but there's nothing there. 
all the while it looks like we're gonna see some cleanup by these helicopters just gonna pick up all these chasseurs from us there is a flak panzer it's got critical ammunition if the flak panzer can actually load up it can actually get a pretty good exchange here the chasseurs from us are stunned the flak panzer low on ammunition are gonna move up it has a very low range but it has lots of damage and that's one of the big trade-offs and here we go the flak panzer is starting to load up and we're seeing some tailspin starting he pulls back quickly. We see four Spartans actually going to move in to try and wipe out these isolated groups. And all the while, like, this is a clear sheer luck scenario. This Cobra might actually catch this command armor. Is it going to happen? Even more helicopters being rallied in. And this is a big key part of what Spawn Farkle is doing. He's controlling supply. He's making sure that his opponent cannot reinforce his position. And in fact, this command armor, which is stuck in mud, just might have avoided death narrowly. <coughs> there is, of course, no recon helicopter here, so digging through these jungles is going to be very hard for them. However, looking at the information that uh, Spawn Farkle knows, he's in a very good position. He's actually going to go for a command kill. Is he able to get it? Ah! It does not appear so. In fact, he might be revealing too much. These are actually very low supply. He could actually just drain the supply out of his opponent. The Shasser Smas are all unloading, trying to wipe out anything that's in these woods here. And there's still a decent amount in here for him to wipe out. But it's mostly Shasser Smas. There's VABs also coming in from the side, forcing these Shasser Smas back. We see some Spartans moving up, going to wipe out this <coughs> completely empty toe. And might be able to deal with these VABs effectively. We see some helicopters moving around the back flank. An infantry carrier going to take this jungle location from Spawn Farkle. He's so smart to know that his opponent's going for this. And actually these Spartans will in fact get routed. The VAB reign supreme. And we're seeing another group of units being dumped on top of this location. And it might be soon time for Voss Fury to throw in the towel. Spawn Farkle is just, just gravely outplaying him. However, these Shasser Smoss are actually ranking up pretty effectively. This is a rank 3 Shasser Smoss right here. Um, the Fusiliers catch off this recon squad. They're going to kill that too. Uh, the points difference is even in favor of Spawn Farkle as, as, as far as income goes. Uh, the Shasser Smosk will actually get cleaned up by this group of Spartans, which is kind of scary for uh, Voss Fury. There is three VAB supporting from the side, and actually, no, it's routed, but here comes more infantry to the cause. This is another eight group. The command armor finally getting pulled back. It's pretty much defeated 20 squads in this location, and now finally it's getting pulled back. That means there are no point locations for for Voss Fury. This is definitely it for the Furious Jimin. There's really not much you can do right now. This VAB, these three VABs have been doing very well defending pretty much everything. But that's about it. And now he's down to just the one command. He's lost that command through random grenade damage. And he's actually going to move it south. He's going to move it south into Gulf. However, there is a group of infantry Coming to intercept, there are no real vehicles here that do damage. There's a flak panzer, which is mostly out of ammunition. The Shasters from us here, the four squads here, are the only thing that really deals with this. And if this infantry squad connects with this command armor, that's it. That's game. He still doesn't know it's there, though. And that's one advantage he has. However, here comes... Da -da 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 -da, eight gazelles. With this number of gazelles, he can actually make this shrapnel run out of rockets. Make this flak panzer run out of ammunition and have enough left over to kill everything. That is a scary prospect for Mr. Fury, who has no more units left on the map, has no ability to reinforce, and doesn't really have any bases getting points. The gazelles, oh, they're just sidestepping past this, and luckily for the gazelles, there's really not much to actually attack it. There are some flakpanzers, which are now moving, seemingly into position to deal with these gazelles. The command members actually have, as far as I know, pretty high optics, right? That's right. Optics, where are you at? Poor, that's not right. They're better than that because they're invisible. High optic units are invisible. He's actually going to try and rally everything towards Hotel, but it looks like there's a lot of helicopters here that are protecting Hotel. And I just don't know. I just don't know where this can go other than being a, a game in which. He only has 12 units. Flak Panzers are unloading on the on the gazelles. And the gazelles 
run back to this hotel location. The command number is still slowly inching forward, but the command number is actually running out of fuel as well. And the fuel truck uh, might just get sniped here by these these infantry units. In fact, it does. The only fuel truck, the only way to resupply all these vehicles has been sniped. You can also get the FOB. None of these units can restock. The command armor actually might run out of fuel. And yes, in a complete farce, the command armor is actually going to run out of fuel before it can reach a point. It is actually completely over for Voss Fury. Here comes the infantry dropped on top. He's going to wipe out both, and that will end the game. Stuck and out of fuel, we see Spawn Thrakal is able to defeat the syndicate member Voss Fury. And move on to round five. So congratulations to Spawn Farco. And maybe next year to Voss Fury. When Airland Battle comes out. Not that you'd be in the beta for that. <laughs> oh, maybe you'll get in anyway.